Nice. Love that voice every time I hear it. <laughs> um, yeah, happy happy to. So I guess uh, just to clarify, you want me to just go through the treasury management framework now, or do you want to talk more about the budget process, or, or just kind of everything more holistically? Um, yeah, maybe just kind of all of the all the moving pieces, everything that you're kind of uh, working on right now, and uh, kind of where we're looking to go. Um, I I sent over the document um but I, I i think just giving uh him some context would be helpful he's yeah, kind absolutely. of cool. cool yeah i can definitely dive into that and uh, more in tanks i don't know if you would go by tanks or tanks bomb but more in, um so i dropped both the links Morning. to what i've been working on you'll see the in the, in the lounge text um channel and you'll see the first one is the budget process doc and the second one is the treasury management framework so I guess kind of taking a step back um, to you know why I'm drafting these up and, and something I feel like is important really for any DAO, any protocol to kind of do. Um, I think you know communities get started, DAOs get started, and, and they start just kind of making decisions more haphazardly without really taking a systematic approach to how they make decisions as it relates to you know allocation of funds and investment of funding and you know what that looks like. And I, I think, you know, that can work for sure, um, short term, but, you know, as Dow complexity gets, you know, greater and, you know, as there's more money in the treasury, it just becomes a harder process to try to, you know, to steer the right way. So, you know, my, my vision for, for these kind of two documents are, are really kind of setting a culture, um, a shared vision, really a statement that everybody can kind of get behind saying, okay, here, here's what we as a collective group of individuals have decided you know, is the best way to like kind of, you know, utilize funding um, and, and invest our money and, and really state why, like what, what's the purpose of us trying to grow the, our endowment, treasury, whatever it may be. Um, because I think that's something that's typically sorely missed in, in, in most situations. And, and it just creates, you know, uh, confusion down the road. And so that that's what these are trying to do right here. And so, you know, the budget process doc, that that's really about, you know, obviously budgeting, but, you know, more broadly, you know, just fund allocation. Like, how how do you divide fund um, funding of round of, of scarce resources? Um, you know, everybody's going to have different ways that they they need to kind of um, spend funds. They there's different ways to kind of make sure that it's being done in a DAO like manner. Um, and so, what's what's the actual like prescribed powers and in, in the process for doing so? Uh, so, kind of continuing down that line. Uh, you know, really, it starts with just understanding, you know, and maybe a big conversation for today, but really what the structure looks like, we, we can get more into that. Because, um, you know, depending on how the structure is, that's really going to uh, define the process moving forward. So, you know, if, if we do have a structure where there's like defined, um, you know, I think we're going to call them circles or teams or, or guilds, whatever you want to call it around, that, that basically structure around some strategic asset or strategic function, like, you know, treasury function. Um, so that that's kind of step number one, I think, is laying a foundation where you're actually establishing, you know, a treasury team, a treasury circle. Basically, this is a group of, of dedicated individuals, or at least one individual who is solely dedicated towards uh, monitoring financial reporting, making sure that, you know, when there are proposals coming through that they are, like, just going through some subjective, subject subjective review but are more so are following like these frameworks um and so it's it's really kind of giving clarity to the whole community about okay when a proposal is made uh you know what what are the key attributes that we're supposed to include in there and then who's the one that's actually analyzing to make sure that those attributes have been met um and, and stop me by the way if you if you want to kind of highlight or if you have any questions about anything in particular but uh, so that, that, that document kind of establishes a treasury team. Um, you know, you can kind of see where there's some checks and balances based off of the different powers, who can initiate what, who can actually fully authorize it when it's, it has been initiated. Um, you know, then it kind of goes into more granular detail about, you know, how do you actually budget? Um, you know, taking a step back, I think in a true DAO-like structure, like the most DAO of DAO, like, you know, it, you may not have a core team, um, I think that in this situation, it sounds like there's, there's probably a need. I think almost in every situation, there's like a need for a, a core team or a core circle, or whatever you want to have it, a core group of individuals. And so you need to make sure that there's ways that the DAO actually can allocate funds to them in a decentralized manner. Because 
in the end, like the treasury needs to be very decentralized, very, you know, it, it can be relatively slow moving with how, you know, funds are governed and, and how they're um, allocated. But once they have been approved and allocated, they, they need to be like, have, people need to have access to them to, to make moves, to, to hire people when they need to, to, you know, make disbursements for dues and subscriptions, for security audits or whatever, whatever it may be, like, you know, not everything can has to wait or should wait as long as it should for the typical government process. And so by setting up teams and, and then a separate wallet that basically allows these teams to kind of move more nimbly, you're, you're bifurcating the governance process as it relates to fund allocation. Um, and so you can see that little chart um, within there about like, okay, what's the activity type? Um, where is, are the funds being actually held? Uh, what is the process for initially allocating it to that wallet or that, that custody um, method? And then once it has been allocated to that, that wallet or whatever it may be, what's the actual process to getting you know, true disbursement approved, if there is any? Um, so that, that kind of goes in there. Um, I'm probably getting too more too granular for now. Um, but then you know the rest. Go ahead. Okay. Um. So this. Um. So in going through this, like, and then and through the uh, some of the you said, it's like I, I I totally understand, um, where you're coming from, and um, uh, and and I guess I and I asked. I think I remember I asked you this question about like the the current role or, um, in um. Deeper. Deeper now, I think that's where it was from. Um, uh, but there's this kind of like dichotomy of like uh, being a, a decentralized uh, DAO or a decentralized DAO with a core group of people who are um, running running things. Um, and um, uh, but I, I think that. Um, uh, so in, in terms of um, uh, the governance process, like I think um, there was some effort to um, kind of use uh, the model of like the juice box protocol where there's a, a, a notion of like a governance process or a funding cycle. Um, so like on a, on a kind of a, a heartbeat, um, uh, there's kind of a workflow in terms of the type of proposals I go through. Um, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't think, um, I, I think much of, um, I think if I were to break up uh, what you're breaking out into kind of two general buckets, it's um, how, how do we deal with operating funds um, and then uh, and then how do we deal with governance? Um, and I, I do think that like, uh, I mean, I think uh, pretty early on in this treasury management framework, um, you you basically say like this is basically a, a transparent business, um, uh, and like um, I think I think that was the question I had last time um, with like what you're working on um, with Keeper about like what's the difference between that and a like an actual disinvestment business, um, and um, I think uh, I, I think we want to be cognizant of um, not. Uh, doing things like that, I, I think the definition, uh, um, the the SEC's determination of the original DAO's um, uh, security, um, uh, security worthiness or whatnot, it was that um, that there was like a core group of uh, centralized actors um, operating on behalf of like the organization. And so I, I, I think um, we, we want to try to be as decentralized and flat as possible. How, even though it's not, even though it's difficult to be um, like super flat, but like effectively like there's 88 or less than a hundred um, uh, people who have contributed to the, um, to the multi-sig um, and the, um, the amounts has varied, but like we, we, we actually can afford to just be as flat um, as we need to. Um, I, and I think we want to be cognizant of that um, if we don't want to um, go ahead and just incorporate this as a, uh, as a business. Um, uh, in terms of like um, uh, bifurcating the, um, the wallet so that um, there could be some decisions made, um, I, 
I don't disagree with that. I, I think just in terms of like how some of the proceeds or how some of the funds are utilized, um, we, we probably want to have um, at least two um, uh, two multi sigs um, where we have operating. I mean, I, I'm sure we we probably have several of those currently, um, just in terms of like how Fuego and myself uh, deal with the over so. Um, so like o- overall, like I, I think. Um, having uh, these kind of like omnibus documents that kind of can be, uh, communicate like uh, the same message, obviously that's important. And I, um, I think the uh, um, kind of the direction or the uh, the documents, the governance documents that I uh, pointed at least Dr. Two and um, Michael um, around Juice Box in particular was because of a very kind of purposeful efforts to be super decentralized and um, uh, and, and let things and not have a, a core group of people that with that said um, there are, uh, um, I, I, I don't maybe and it may not be uh, drastically differently in terms of terminology uh, if there are a couple of people who are participating while other people are not participating um, you know, as long as, like, for example, we're in the lounge talking about it, um, the lounge text is sending back and forth the text. So there is no information asymmetry. Um, so, you know, the um, splitting hairs between, like, uh, there's a core group of people that are doing stuff, or there's only a couple of people that actually want to do stuff while other people don't, aren't doing stuff, or aren't volunteering to do one of these things. Um, so I, I just want to. No, I think I'm just repeating myself with different thoughts. Yeah, so I guess my my first comment would be, I, I think, um, maybe maybe that's not the first comment. Um, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll just kind of say that, you know, I, like Uniswap, for instance, is extremely decentralized, at least in my opinion. I, I would think, you know, most people would probably agree. But they have a similar structure um, where they have the Uniswap Labs team. And, and that's somebody that is, like, allocated through governance funding um, from the, the general DAO. And so like, you know, they're, they're extremely decentralized, but you still have this really truly core people that are acting as the stewards for, for this code base. Um, so like, I, I don't think like setting up, at least in my opinion, like, a almost like a separate entity of just like core individuals or core circles or whatever you want to call it, or at least like acknowledging that those are there, like necessarily creates a level of decent or uh, of centralization. Um, so I guess that's the first thing I would say, just looking at the landscape in general. But that's a great. I mean, that, that's that's a great point. Like the um, uh, the labs are, are they funded by the um by the nonprofit? Like, are they broken up into uh, a nonprofit or is the labs the same thing as a nonprofit? Um, I I don't I don't know necessarily like their their true like legal structure if they have one. Um, but you know, in its most basic sense, like it, the labs doesn't necessarily even have to have like a formalized structure because in again, or again, it's just a group of individuals or contributors that are like acting as stewards for this protocol. Um, and they, and they can be acting, you know, kind of as like a slime jelly to some degree, like where they're all acting as like 1099 contractors, but because there's like, like this almost like fluid entity and maybe it's more structured. It probably is more like legally structured, I'd imagine. But like, let's just say something we can create is just like this very fluid structure where it's not like a defined like legal wrapper per se. That's like a lapse, but it's just a group of contributors that know that they and they're and their community members just like everybody else. But they're just you know um, consistently paid con- community members with more defined tasks. And yeah, you know, I mean, people... go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, and I was just gonna say, and like, they're not people that necessarily like have any hierarchy, like that there's always going to be social hierarchy that's kind of created from them. But it, it just by having them in like this defined structure or, or undefined structure with defined roles and tasks, um, that that's going to create a, a better situation than kind of people acting um, more free flowing than, you know, a truly deep DAO structure that's, you know, that you don't have a separate um, labs team or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, overall, I, I don't think we're saying things much different, just maybe different terminology. But I don't, so I don't disagree that um, there needs to be a group of people who are compensated in some manner on a consistent basis whose, whose job it is effectively to be stewards of governance. 
of process of um, uh, and um, I, I don't disagree that there needs to be something like that um, in order to just move proposals around and whatnot. Uh, I just wanted to um, bring up that, that there is um, uh, there's this dichotomy of uh, of uh, trying to be this decentralized structure um, uh, seemingly to avoid it, not not to avoid um, forming a business license because we can I mean obviously we can easily just do that um, so uh, but um, but just be cognizant of uh, of um, uh, structures that uh, and findings um, from previous um, uh, structures before, in terms of being evaluated you know, as a security, I think just being cognizant of those things is a bit easier. Um, well, it to me, it sounds like we're we're really talking about optics, and you know, we're we're essentially going to arrive at the same place yeah. where it's it's all of us that care about governance and are incentivized to to work on it um so it sounds to me like how do we make this process seemingly inclusive and open and yeah. um you know yeah it, it, so um but it, it sounds like we're kind of all on the same page um in terms of like uh at least um setting setting these objectives and uh you know structure and constraints and everything um it's just more about do we make this uh more dao like from an optic standpoint and open i, I, th I think I, I i think as long as um uh, as long as all the communication that there's no information asymmetry, so there's going to be a core group of people, core group or a group of people who are interested, either from compensation perspective or they are in uh, what they want to accomplish or participate in in this organization, um, and uh, that there, there's uh, as uh, every every opportunity there is in, in terms of communication to uh, write things in the Discord. Um, so that there's no information asymmetry, I think is the key part, uh, which is what's happening. Right? The documents aren't locked down. Every has access to them. They're shared. So, um, so uh, then the, the next thing is um, so uh, uh, so I don't disagree with in terms of how to how to break it out. Um, uh, with some. Uh, th all of these documents are basically working towards um, setting up the uh, MIPS, basically a set of uh, a set of proposals to be ratified. Is that correct? Yes. So these documents will basically be their own individual MIPS. Um, and I, I think we discussed this, Fuego and Novi and I, um, last week, that it, it's probably going to be great to kind of release these, in, well, not release them, but to formally... Uh, release these to the governance process together um, just because they do kind of go hand in hand. But yes, they will each be their own separate MIPS. Um, and then one other thing I'll kind of highlight there is um, you'll see towards the top of each of those documents and, and I need to like make sure that those line up and put those throughout. Uh, but you'll see like where in the proposal section they have like almost sub MIPS. So if anybody in the community or just like a group of people have a, a problem with one in particular or not kind of throwing the baby out with the bathwater, they can kind of highlight one sub MIP in particular to be edited or to take out completely. Um, but yes, that is the intention to basically push okay. these through governance. Not push them, but release them to governance. Okay. And then are, are these going to overwrite the um, uh, the previous... Um, uh, so basically, this looks like it gives the framework in terms of like how to deal with money. Yeah, um, so... And, and correct me if I'm wrong, but like, so basically like, you know, the first couple of MIPS you guys have are really establishing like, what is governance? What is the actual true process for it? What are the specifications of the governance process in general? 
once that like basically outlines the the process for just you know ground one um or layer one getting governance established okay now we can start layering on the different other types of processes and structures on top of that that relate to different functions so you know we have general governance and what's the process for that and then it's okay saying well now we know we need to like come up with more defined processes and infrastructure for how we allocate funding right and so this you know further narrows what that governance process looks like by function and by activity um just to give more clarity versus it being more broad uh, because again like if you have everything very broad like people may come up with ideas and it may go through governance and people may not understand why it's not going through and it's just not getting voted on the right way and instead this gives clarity to like okay here is what we as a community have ratified as how we want to spend our money like it's mission driven budgeting right like we are going to try to align our financial situation with our mission and i know that sounds like a, like a no brainer but i think ratifying that yeah, yeah. And, and getting people to agree on is really powerful yeah. because you know when somebody comes up with an idea like hey let's invest in this dgen option it's like you know how does that actually help with our mission like are you just trying to push your bags uh, you yeah. know it, without, outside of having a framework like this in place you know you it's it's much harder to combat those type of things and that's uh, it, it's definitely going to happen no matter how you swing it like i'm sure you guys right. are all aware of that and so well i mean is, is you're basically just saying that like um if you want to make a proposal more like bulletproof or, or more meaningful, you have to kind of get through a bunch of material. Right, like, someone's gonna have to read a bunch of material to even understand how to do a proposal in the exactly. first place. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, like, the barrier is that. Uh, yeah, the barrier is really low. It's just like, as you'll see, like in this budget process document, like for uh, investment, it's like, okay, like you can write, anybody can write a proposal. Like, this is not limiting who. Can write a proposal or what that process looks like or well, i guess it is limiting the process a little bit but it's like well we want to make sure that when there is a proposal that it's at least just well thought out right that there's background there's analysis there's a budget there's there's these attributes that we feel like are the bare minimum for for really kind of vetting if this opportunity is a valid and like somebody actually has put the time and effort into researching this as a as a good idea for the whole community to kind of put their backing behind um so yeah that that's definitely one example of of just not gatekeeping, but just making sure there's sufficient information that's mission driven. Okay. But um, I, I did have a question for you. Uh, I mean, and I know this is kind of going back to the original point, which I think we are more on the same page now. But um, just so I have more clarity on, like, what about a, either of these proposals made you feel like it was creating like centralization, hierarchy vectors, or maybe there was just like. I know we, I had the term leadership in there, and like that has connotations, so I changed that with stewardship um, or, or something to that effect. But what else did you see in either of these proposals that you thought were kind of like centralization vectors or something like that? Um, I mean, just, just what we just discussed. That, okay. um, that like, ultimately, whether we ha I mean, when we have this, when this document exists, um, uh, uh, like, we may be on the same page and it, let's say it gets ratified um, and we're still on the same page. Um, uh, but anyone who comes along, um, you know, the, um, having, uh, it's just different, it's just a different reason for those people to like um, be disappointed when their proposal doesn't go through, whether they didn't read a bunch of documents to put it into a form that is, you know, vetted or thought out or whether um, uh, like it, it's just it's just a different way to address um, noise, I guess it were um, uh, and um, uh, or maybe it's to kind of like a really cogent mechanism to say, well, this proposal didn't fly because it wasn't well thought out here or you didn't have an analysis section here versus just you know no. No reason except it just didn't fly and people didn't understand it. Um, and so uh, the, the end point, the end goal is, you know, making sure that uh, governance or um, uh, stewardship over the assets, um, uh, can we, we can operate. And so, so I, it's, it's, I think we get to the same goal at the end either way really um just how people feel 
um, but which is important because this is all about people. Yeah. Oh, another thing I'll say that it's kind of along the same lines is this is also a protection mechanism for um, what I would call just seeing like e either one of you or, or like somebody who gains a lot of social credibility in the community could easily just come up with like an investment idea. Maybe it's even helping their own bags. And just the way human nature is, it's like somebody recommended this that has high level of social credibility. And it's like, I don't have enough information or there's not enough people who are dedicated to understanding what that looks like to say whether that's a good idea. So I'm just going to go with the process, what, what the rest of the community is saying or what this person with the highest level of social credibility is doing. And like that is probably a good approach in many situations, but there's going to be many situations where that's going to lead to you know any organization down the wrong path. And so by having these like frameworks in place, that it definitely protects against that. Like it's always bound to happen potentially. But if you establish a treasury team, you have established processes and infrastructure to kind of uh, for for these types of things to go through. You really protect against making the wrong decision through just you know following the leader. I guess you could say. I mean, yeah, but like, I mean, is there something in I did, is there something that says that, like, if you are to benefit or if you in any permutation, either by you know tokens or by financial, that I uh, you're to abstain? Is there anything about that, like conflict of interest? Yeah. Um, so there is something. It's in the Treasury Management Framework. It's it's relatively. Um, it's not a huge section, um, but it basically like looks at like the allowable investments, and it doesn't like have very specific criteria it's more broad it's like well you know for an investment grade investment they've been in operation for six months they've you know had an audit blah 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 and one of those investment grades things um attributes is there are no major conflicts of interest with any md stakeholders um that and i could probably be more specific that that wrote the proposal um and then like a high risk one like maybe there could be conflicts but with related parties but it's okay because we're limiting the percent of our total treasury that we can have in that and we're we're just we're we're literally attacking it as a high risk investment. It's understood, and you know those those types of things are disclosed that there are conflicts of interest. So that also is covered um, under this allowable investment section of the Treasury Management Framework. What page is that? Um, seven. seven. Yeah, if you if you uh, control F, uh, maybe high risk, you'll you'll find it. Yeah, um, because like, I mean, I mean, that's a good example where like, uh, um, you know, the structure of businesses where you have shareholders and directors and officers, um, that that's just as built in, um, you know, conflicts of interest and uh, uh, or mechanisms to deal with conflicts of interest. And um, I mean, it, it's, it's, by, it's codified by statute. Um, uh, so like, um, so these should represent no more than five percent of the treasury's given time. Um, under investment, it should um, let's see and be um, readily available to smart contract, um, and that there uh, there could be conflicts of interest within the team or other related parties, um, and there are no lines. Okay, so this is basically this is a disclosure saying that there could be a conflict of interest, um, but the mechanism of like no more than five percent. Um, let's protect against that right yeah. i mean this is basically just a disclosure that could be um so well okay I, I, so once you so looking at this taking a step back if you did have a treasury team established and like let's say there is a new proposal for what would potentially be deemed as a high-risk investment that treasury team is tracking like what has been identified um you know more from an accounting financial reporting perspective it's high risk so like if you think about how financial statements would look, you would think, okay, here's how much money we have in investment grade investments. Here's how much we have in high risk investments. And so if a proposal popped along saying we should degen into this, um, you know, really high risk new seed round, it's like, well, you know, we're kind of at our allocation um, right now. And so it's, it's not something we should do. Or, um, you know, if we do have kind of capacity to invest in that, it's like, okay, people need to disclose if they have any conflicts. Um, because, you know, I think it's fine that we take advantage of opportunities for things like maybe there's a seed round that comes along for something that we really want to support. But, you know, one of our, our major people within the team, whatever you want to call it, 
or the person who wrote the proposal is is heavily invested or involved in that process. That doesn't necessarily prohibit like that from being a great idea. It just needs to be known on the front end, and we need to kind of limit that the yeah. collateral damage that could happen from situations like that. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I think in these situations, I, I think that um, like the common uh, activity or uh, it's just for that person who has an interest to to abstain. Um, but uh, anyway, so um, yeah, I, mean, I think we're good. I, I forgot my quarter. We did some a clarification of why we're on top, talking about this right now. I think uh, maybe a lot of where we're getting caught up is not necessarily the the structure itself, but the um, how like the I don't know what you would call it, but basically how how people get into the different areas, whether it's treasury team or whatever. And so maybe just making sure that that's super inclusive and communicated that way, and that you know whether it's like elections that we do of you know where we can elect those people um, or whatever it is that, but and that anyone can kind of, you know, there's the right checks and balances in place so that uh, it's anyone can kind of from the community can be in those positions. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, that's the biggest point, making sure that like anybody who is interested in can get access, there's nothing getting the information to like anyone who wants to get involved can get involved. Um, but for those people who are involved, you know, having kind of clerk is great. Um, so, um, what else should we focus on? Well, one thing I just genuinely believe that there are are certain things financial Reporting is a really good one. That concludes um, the the accounting um, per se. But I, mean, I, don't I, know if... I don't disagree. I don't. I don't disagree that like um, uh, having editable financial documents available for anyone to pop in and do it. Um, but like. Um, you know, there, there's been a number of uh, situations where people want to come in and contribute, um, uh, and um, and they've been, uh, so in those situations, being mindful of making sure that you know you have a good copy of of the work and that the copy that they're editing is a copy that's been branched for them, um, uh, and that that person had um, uh, the ability to to try to help in in a way that may not have been successful, but um, it doesn't get in the way of your main line. I, 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 I told, like, believe me, Matt or Daddy Matty, like, I totally understand what you're saying. And um, uh, I don't want people running, you know, running a mocking code or, I mean, even kind of like less serious stuff, like a design of something. But, um, but there, there has been situations where let someone kind of do it just to uh, try to contribute and hope for the best, uh, but not make it um, mess up your own workflow. Yeah, it, it's a balancing act. I mean, I, I think we'd all agree that, you know, ETH is, or, and Ethereum <laughs> is extremely decentralized, right? But then, like, you know, we have this foundation that's, like, editing the code and, like, yeah, they're not going to let just anybody into those meetings and, and workshops where they're, you know, doing that. But, you know, in the end, I think we'd all agree it's it's relatively decentralized. And so I, I would kind of draw a parallel to, to something like that. And I know we're not, like, building fundamental product, protocol code like that or, or blockchain code. Uh, but, you know, I, I that that's just one kind of uh, scenario I, I kind of see. 
Yeah, I mean, it's it's a balancing act between being inclusive and like having people who should not be messing with stuff, messing with stuff. Um, and that's this. Yeah, because if it was yeah. up to me, I would have had the merge a couple months ago, but whatever. <laughs> I wouldn't call like Bitcoin very inclusive. So. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, at least we're people. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a great example. It's like there's this like this social consensus, and it, this it, and it's not written per se, but it's just developed where it's like, okay, we're not changing the code, and it's like, how did that develop? I don't know, but it's it's well established. But then there's other DAOs that like it it's not well established how dynamic versus fixed they are in nature, and so like setting up like these these documents of understanding, I guess you could call them like that. That's that's definitely a big intent here. Um, to kind of create a culture yeah, yeah. around a, a protocol and a brand and, you know, a mission. Yeah. But, okay, cool. Well, I guess um, sounds like we're on the same page. I mean, I guess the biggest thing for us to kind of nail down from my perspective, and you guys correct me if you want to talk about something else, is just understanding organizational structure, um, and making sure that it doesn't lead to having connotations of hierarchy, centralization, um, and, and how that relates to governance and these different frameworks. And so I guess kind of giving you some updates based off some feedback I know I've gotten, um, you know, I've removed, and I'll, I'll make sure I do it here, uh, but I removed anything that was related to like true leadership. Um, we, we can get into more than that, but like removing leadership, um, titling language in here, um, removing that the concept of CEO, CTO, stuff like that. And now it, it's just kind of left with the circle concept, which, you know, I, I think uh, you could kind of see it. That's within the budget process document on uh, page four when with kind of organizational structure. Um, so Circle is really just, go ahead. Uh, how are Circles going? Like, are people really using those or like, is that thing or? You know, we don't have them set up yet. Just, oh, I, I thought that. We, we don't really have the contributors to set them up yet. Okay. Yeah, this is this is definitely a longer term view um, of it. But um, yeah, so basically, like you could replace the ter the, the the term "circle" with "team," "guild," whatever whatever you want, and like like we we can still change it. Obviously, like th this is something that I think like uh, when I talked to Fuego and Ob that, that they said that uh, their understanding was more towards a circle model. Um, I, I believe. So. I, I think, I mean, that'd be worth uh, kind of talking about is that like, I, um, the, um, uh, the fork of Juicebox has like the, the core of that protocol is to, um, uh, is around funding cycles and is around, um, uh, uh, basically these payments split. Um, and I, I could see like, um, the circle, um, I mean, if this if the circle is what I'm thinking about, like if it's still that same thing where you just add it and people kind of vote on who did what, um, the uh, um, uh, doing funding cycles and then having like the, the trial period, one time payment, um, and then reoccurring, um, having those kind of gauntlets to kind of pass through in order to get onto a funding cycle may end up to be like just less maintenance in terms of um, having people like allocate points per month. So like I don't. It might be um, useful to kind of give that a consideration. I, um, it also would collapse like that tool into the existing governance structure, and um, and then obviously um, uh, then we'd be using or we get to a point of just using the um, uh, uh, the treasury um, in that manner, um, then. Uh, we'd be using it for its intended purpose. So to clarify, I'm not like overly familiar with the juice box model, but um, okay. So there's, there's, there's basically like seasons, cycles um, that run along governance and it, it's the way that circles or, or teams or whatever you, you want to call it, get funded. Um, but that is voted on by the general DAO, right? Is it one of those things where, the circle or the team is initiating what their like uh, strategic objectives are and like the resources needed to get there. Um, and then like, come um, up with, or is it, or is it more broad yeah. where it's just like, okay, we're going to allocate the, just the general community is allocating this amount of funds to the circle for this period. It, it's, it's both. So like, uh, like 
the front end. So let me let me is okay if I share my screen so you guys can see. Um, um, so like this is kind of the main thing, um, but everybody kind of considers it as a as a, a GoFundMe thing with this thing add juice. But the the real thing about behind this is that um, every you have a cycle, um, and this cycle is determined by fourteen days, um, and uh, it it determines on uh, you describe like how you issue tokens. So when you come up here and you contribute, you get these many tokens back, um, and then if more people contribute. Um, then what you need in your target, then that causes what's called overflow, and then you can uh, redeem. Um, but basically, this funding distribution are, are individuals. Um, and there's also um, other projects. So uh, you know, these, every project has this description of like how much it needs and what overflow is and how, much, how their tokens uh, work. Um, but this is the core thing. It's not, it's not a fundraising and, and hardly anybody does this. Oh, and then this is also tokens that get admitted. Um, and you can see it's 50%. So 50% of the tokens that are admitted are reserved. So this is basically like um, options. So whenever someone gives uh, ETH, half of the tokens that get emitted back to the person who contributes get split. And so what they're going for is just pure decentralization. Um, but this is the cycle. So um, People who are contributing to the, the core DAO get uh, their compensation either in, in tokens or in, in ETH. And then if it's something where they need to steer or govern like their objectives, um, then they create uh, their own project on Juice Rock. So uh, you know, the front end, um, that front end team needs 60K. Um, uh, this is the design team. They need 20K. This is the communications team. So. Um, uh, and, and you can, they, they have varying degrees of like passing through what their objectives are and passing through what their governance are. And, 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 what they, and obviously, when you contribute to them, um, they emit, so uh, they emit tokens back. Um, so, uh, so effectively, you can define your own thing, but it's all defined around um, the cycle, um, uh, payroll, basically, payroll and options. And um, uh, there's no liquidity. But um, so uh, the getting onto the funding distribution and getting onto the reserve rate is, is the hard part. You can't just pop in, you know, edit a document and pop out. Um, so they, they have in their governance uh, very special, um, you know, you can ask for a one time. Like basically, you're not, uh, you're not supposed to ask for, any, I mean, you need to contribute um, and then uh, propose to the committee. You need a sponsor and um, and in terms of your contribution, whether it's two weeks or a month, uh, then you ask for your one time payout, um, and then you can once you kind of carve out your your space in the world, then you can you know ask for a re recurring, um, and uh, it it's something to consider in terms of like it's all in one place um, and. Uh, Uh, and we may we may have to go over it you know a bunch of times because for sure nobody really nobody understands this about the protocol. They only just look at oh it's just a button to quickly you know create a DAO and get money, um, and then people just take the money and leave. Um, and so obviously, what we're doing to this is adding more things to keep it relevant. a lot of sense i didn't realize that myself when we were talking about all this that that would that funding cycle would live on juice box yeah so it's completely transparent i mean that's 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 the unfortunate thing with for them is that um people don't understand that it's a it's a um a funding cycle protocol or it's a programmable treasury protocol uh everybody just thinks it's just a you know a donation jar um uh and we can go more into detail with it i mean obviously it's um the, the v2 stuff is a lot more complicated you can bring your own token is an emit tokens um the nft stuff is complicated not, i mean not complicated i mean all these tools are trying to be reduced down to like super simple but uh it's super powerful um 
uh, but um, most importantly, you know, like every every DAO that gets created on the system has a token, and um, that token and the liquidity of that token in our system is just you know you have to manage it. I mean, if, if you think about every project on your system that wants to get a part of your endowment and they're on their own, they each have their own bonding curve and they each have their own funding goals. Some people might have, you know, a, a fixed amount of tokens. Some people might want to have, some people have different funding cycle requirements, which effectively is what it turns into. And so how do you, how do you make a thing can dynamically manage um, uh, funding cycle requirements um, while maintaining uh, decentralized um, attributes on Ethereum and, uh, and the governance. And of course, there's staking for V2. So I guess um, I want to start with this. So I guess my first comment would be, th th in more of a clarification, th this is more of a mechanism for dispersing those payments, right? Like in a very decentralized way. Like, and I ask that because it, to contrast that with what the, a budget um, process kind of looks like, but that's more formalized. Um, you know, I would say like looking, and again, I'm not an expert on Juicebox, and, and I know that little tutorial was helpful, but you know, what I will say is if you view it like that, you're not going to have a holistic view of the entire organization's finances, um, you know, at one point in time, but you know, expanding upon that like more from a runway perspective um, because that's what a budget really is doing it's, it's aligning what strategic future strategic objectives are to current resources that are scarce and um looking and projecting that out ahead to make sure that what you are budgeting makes sense for you know the rest of the year for the rest of you know the, the life of the organization's goals yeah so, you're right Patty. You're, yeah you're right like you'll still need to do budgeting process to get runway uh, but the mechanism in terms of approving people, like specifically I was addressing Circle. Yeah. So having a program that people to determine who is doing work in order to allocate some amount of money in that next two weeks or one month to pay that person is, is a separate system that if, you know, if we just go like this, clapped it into, um, but it's your point, um, there are other spreadsheets um, that exist um, that do financial analysis on how much runway, what they want to invest in, what project, what, who does what. Um, and uh, no decisions are made with the funding cycle um, that I just showed you. Um, decisions are made with materials that um, this core team or, or this team would put together. But the execution of how um, these, uh, instead of someone sitting with a, a multi-sig and approving um, uh, individual payments to various parties, um, uh, this just one massive multi-sig as a plugin into uh, um, into Gnosis, um, and then the, this treasury has eighteen million in it, and it just pumps out um, that funding cycles amount. Um, so I, I'm not, yeah. Please don't uh, interpret what I'm saying as we don't need that or we don't need this. Like, absolutely, it's still everything you guys are writing and doing. Say, like, I'm just kind of discussing the circle, specifically circle. Okay, that makes sense. Um, I, th I think yeah. So it sounds like it's just a better mechanism for disbursement. Um, as we, as, why can this not paste? Anyways, um, so I think really the only difference would be from on the actual like document that we're looking at is really looking at like that process by activity matrix where you know ongoing operations. Um, you know, basically that has to do with the different circles, right? And and those that money is going to be held. Um, you know, uh, maybe well, maybe maybe take a step back. So, Juicebox seems like it's more focused towards like paying contributors, right? But what a, does it address at all? Like just ongoing expenses or do some subscriptions that need to be incurred by a specific team or having other yeah. resources they need to pay contractors or um like yeah, pay yeah. for so, security audit and stuff like that yeah so there there's a channel where you do accounting but for sure it um so yeah that's for sure uh someone who's focused on the treasury is gonna but instead of like you having to disperse but basically that gets approved 
and then there's a lump sum in every two weeks or every funding cycle, and that sum goes to um, the protocol. Um, so it's not to say that, um, yeah, but I, yeah, absolutely, they have expenses for the graph and and Fira and, um, and contractors and security. There are like three security audits this funding cycle. Um, those people uh, uh, effectively. Uh, get paid into uh, an individual gets paid and then that, that individual gets reimbursed. The individual pays those expenses and then mm -hmm. gets reimbursed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, as opposed to them being added directly onto the thing. Does, does Juicebox have a way to like pay into a Savlier contract or like a streaming contract? Like, and, do you know what that is by the way? I'll yeah. Ask. Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, it it does for V two, but yeah, we can do streams. Okay, I mean, we definitely need to like look at. I mean, effectively, it's just a it's a fancier governance process on top of Gnosis. Effectively, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. um, that's that's really like that's really what it is. Um, uh, because you know, because Gnosis is generally decoupled from your tokens. Um, I mean, not generally, it is decoupled from your tokens. Um, so, yeah, I think one of right. these is whether it's you or maybe someone else from Juicebox, maybe. Have no, I, I, I should dive. tell you. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I yeah. still am a little bit confused myself and just kind of how it works. So, yeah. Literally. Yeah, it's for sure. I mean, you're not the only one. I mean, like, I, like, like I've shared, like, everybody looks at it as a funding mechanism uh, and not as a, a programmable treasury. But that, and that's kind of it's kind of sad in a way, um, but um, yeah, better marketing as well. It sounds like it's a well. Big I don't I don't know if better marketing is going to fix. I mean, I think that's what's something. I, think, I mean, honestly, that's what's awesome about our community is that you guys like would be perfect in terms of onboarding people and kind of walking them through it. They they have people. They have two people who who do that who onboard, and but it it's kind of complicated. Like it, you know, if you go through like the has everyone here done um, the sandbox of the move? Yep. Yeah. So uh, you know, so knowing what your discount to your bonding curve, or I mean, how much of that information do you think you would know just like to do a project? Like, I mean, the answer is that you it take a lot of thinking, a, a lot of homework to get to a stage to like launch something with what you know with what we did, and even if you cut all the questions in. And that's the reality. The reality is that you know most people don't know what bonding curves are. Maybe they shouldn't care, um, or discounts, or incentive models. Um, I don't know if there's an answer to that, except just great onboarding people. Yeah, I mean, I think it's 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 figuring out how to simplify the message, which is not an easy task. Or, or to have great, you know, uh, ambassadors. You yeah. know, that, that basically just talk through people with what they want to accomplish, and then we can do it for them. You know, it's just like, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I mean, whatever you guys want to do that. Yeah, I think something that'd be helpful for me is uh, in the organizational structure section of the budget process, if you could just kind of write up how you envision like leveraging Juicebox as a mechanism to pay, um, as it relates to like what else is in here. Um, again, that's on page three of the budget process, but if you could just add some of your commentary or, or just background on, on yeah. how you think we can use that, I think that'll be super helpful from my perspective. So, so I, I mean, to be clear, like, uh, uh, they're going through their security audit, uh, and, and it just got released, but, um, uh, movement, um, are a bunch of extensions onto their core. So, um, so it'll be like the movement uh, system. I mean, mm. You may maintain some juice box branding of it, but like effectively, like, you know, originally we, we forked the um, open law tribute framework, and, um, uh, but it, it, it's not as extensible in terms of like what we want to accomplish as opposed to this programmable treasury with these other extensions. So just to be clear, like that, that's um, like we, um, uh, we're, uh, adding a bunch of extensions onto this, and I'm working with the. I'm on, I'm on the core team to, you know, uh, 
face them with or add a bunch of stuff to this. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Comment on that. And also, it's a great learning experience too. Like they, you know, they they just had like this last funding cycle. Um, uh, they, you know, they enabled the Sanj DAO. Sanj, you know, uh, they don't really understand what's going on in the world, but they've been wanting to raise some money. They they made a, a juice box thing. Um, I think they raised forty six, forty eight million dollars. Um, at the time, five percent of you know all. Uh, whenever you whenever you exit funds from the Juicebox protocol, um, there's a five percent uh, protocol fee in return. You get Juicebox. So Assange has eighty million um, uh, Juicebox tokens, and they basically made a proposal, like a super. I don't. Uh, there's a word for it. I don't. I don't, I don't know what the right, right word, but you know, proposal basically saying they wanted their five percent back. Um, because they, they t- basically took all their money and they bought one NFT and the NFT was, uh, the money was donated. So, you know, the group of people that formed it didn't have any money left. And so they, they realized, oh shit, we need, we need money. So they went back to protocol saying, you know, we want protocol feedback. And, you know, that was a pretty interesting discussion in, in Discord and on Twitter and um, and then on the snapshot vote. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stuff in terms of like their cycle and the maturity of like how they enable movements or how they enable projects is how it's terminology on, the, on there. And um, yeah, there's just a lot of interesting stuff to learn from. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, if you could just add some of your, uh, your knowledge and thoughts to that document on that section, that'd be super great. But, uh, Under organizational structure, disbursement yeah. mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, well, I think we're at an hour. Anything else you guys want to hit on? Or, or maybe just more broadly, like anything super material, major within either of these documents that need to be, you know, really revisited heavily, you know, maybe removed entirely. Um, you know, from my perspective, I think we're on the same page. It's just about like the yeah. lexicon, um, and then just kind of clearing up some of the things we already discussed. But you know, anything else that we we need to hit on or kind of heavily What's the added timeline? On? Sorry. What's the timeline for all these MIPS? Um, you know, I, not far off. I mean, like it, you, as you can see, like you know, you're gonna add your thoughts all around that mechanism. Um, I'm gonna do some other editing based on some things we discussed today, which should be too heavy, but. Um, you know, I was holding off, like, doing some other commentary on, like, the Child Token Vault, Endowment, Movement Reserves. Um, that's really just high-level commentary on the processes for each of those, um, at, uh, how do I want to say this, uh, process, each of those disbursement processes as it relates to the budget. So I just need to add some commentary there. That won't take too long. Uh, the Treasury Management Framework is also in pretty solid shape it's similar things just adding some commentary around some of those functions um us nailing down some of like the actual percentages like as an example like high risk funds we said no more than five percent like so uh, that's kind of a placeholder right now but you know we can kind of come up with what we feel is you know the the true number that at least us as a collective group wants. I'm sure that maybe there's other who have strong feelings, but at least like putting pen to paper on what we feel like we're going to have as our first pass to the wild, releasing it to the wild. Um, and then I just have like this treasury composition section, which uh, I already have some information built out elsewhere and I just need to throw in there. So timeline, you know, I could probably have most of these wrapped up for like pretty, uh, pretty concentrated discussion, you know, by the end of this week. that works um i mean i don't know it's like, but okay that, i mean it's great um or it may, maybe to clarify concentration discussion or concentrated discussion could be you know a workshop it could be even something that we feel needs to be live on governance um so wh- whatever timing you think is best what's the child token vault yeah so the child token vault is based on my understanding of how you guys are going to operate basically all of the governance tokens for your movements that you guys, I think you're supposed to get like, you know, basically rough half of the supply um, that will basically be permanent holdings that you guys really won't do anything with outside of liquidity pool. Um, 
activities. So that's basically just going to be a vault that has heavy security, heavy parameters around, you know, movement of those funds. Because really, they should almost never move, right? Outside of the, the revenues that's earned from the LPE positions. Um, that, that's really just what that is. A pretty static funding pool. Okay. So, so um, uh, the original token. So, um, I, I, you know, I, I made that comment to, I think, um, at least after that, like, I think, I think we should move like the die um, into compound that we have now. And I don't know if you guys have talked about like doing a, you know, doing a proposal for that, like how we should, or if you don't think that that's super urgent, like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think just need to figure out if, if we do that before we do all this other stuff, how, what does that look like since there's no governance process in place? Or is it just like a, hey, we're, you know, just a simple proposal that, that we just. Yeah, made? I think it's just a simple proposal that says like, you know, uh, we want the signers to go move this die to compound. Um, but, it, but it's on, I just want to make sure it's on your mind or, because it's something that we should do. Yeah, I, I think we should do. You know, based on my perspective as the writer of these, you know, and, and knowing what you guys are intending to do around governance, I, I don't see any issues with that. I, I think that's completely reasonable. I think Compound's a great choice because I think it's probably seen as you know, the most conservative. So I'd agree. Matt, do you, do you want to work together on just a simple thing around that to make, and just make yeah. it not fits the... Um, yeah, maybe. Well, the I want to talk about that. You're envisioning? Yeah, well... So what would you say about the end? Are we talking about the die, or did you say something about circle at the end? Sorry. No, no, just just the uh, just that proposal and, and making sure it kind of fits the structure that you're kind of anticipating proposals will look like in the future. Just to kind of set set an example. You're regarding well, I mean, I, I the die. I, mean, I I could read the documents and then try to make a proposal and see like how far off I am in terms of like <laughs> comprehending. Um, structures. Yeah, I mean, I, mean I, it, I, I can definitely do it. I can also create the skeleton for anybody who prefers to do it, but really all it would take is if you go down to that uh, strategic investment section of the treasury or the budget process doc, um, you know, the only thing that could potentially conflict, and I don't even see it as being a major issue if it was more simple than this, but it's really just making sure that it has those uh, six attributes. So, you know, investment background, budget, analysis, timeline, execution, and an official team. Um, so, like, that is a high-level skeleton, but I think for something as simple as, like, our first investment of just, you know, getting yield on our die before there's, like, this framework in place, I think you could keep it just relatively simple without all those things. But, again, I, I don't know. Well, it's up to you guys. Yeah, I'll do it. I mean, I'll do it. I mean, the, the, the first the proposal that's in place right now has, like, a template for one-time proposals and, okay. and, and governance proposals. Um, and then, like, so I, I should just go with the differences between, like, that and this, but like, this is something that's pretty much like uncontroversial in terms of like, uh, you know, risk factor. Um, and so uh, it'll just it'll give me it'll give me an opportunity to actually like look at uh, how uh, how educated or how much reading comprehension do you need to to be able to like do a proposal in the system? How accessible this is actually? Okay. Do you guys have that? Is that maybe even on the the Discord like uh, official links? But where what's the um, what's the address for where everything is? Oh, I see it. Okay, the Gnosis safe. Never mind. Is that where things are held? Is the Gnosis safe not the pre movement contributing Gnosis safe? Uh, the, yeah, there's um, it's a Gnosis safe. The the pre, uh, basically like the funny piece for the sandbox, uh, which really shouldn't be used, but. Okay, cool. Nice. Okay. Um, okay, so I, I just want to put that on my calendar for when the next, when's the next time you guys are going to talk about this stuff? Uh, yeah, we got a we got a governance meeting, a larger group on Thursday at uh, 2 Eastern. Is that Thursday or Wednesday? Oh, sorry, Wednesday. Okay, yeah. got it, cool. Yep, I'll be there. Um, and that one, I'm, I'm hoping we, since we didn't really talk about that today, I'm hoping we can kind of like figure out how to merge, um, 
kind of what we're doing on the MIP two and three with your treasury stuff, Maddie, and just kind of like get a, also an outline of like what all the MIPs are going to look like together or like what, what all the, yeah, I guess like what all, all the initial MIPs are and like, the, and then I guess the process for how we kind of launch all those at the same time or if we do them separately. Mm. All right. So, it sounds like we need to kind of like merge the, the previous, it, it sounds like the, um, uh, the, the previous stuff that you worked on would be stacker, like, I guess you didn't feel comfortable like owning it or like that, that was the process like N Maddie basically just reworked the governance. Um, I said that correctly, or is it? Wait, sorry, what was that? Like, um, all the, the stuff that's being proposed here look um, are are going to supersede the original governance stuff, which um, I don't you think put so. together. I think it works together. Yeah, it, I don't know if it supersedes. Um, it, I think it just layers. Well, it, it a defines. Lot. Yeah, it, it just more it defines a different defines. proposal yeah. process. So like that does need to be right. It defines a bunch of stuff that is already defined that um, needs to be reconciled. I don't know if it's I mean, it, a different proposal because process. You don't, you don't, I'm sorry. You, it doesn't define different proposals. I don't, I don't think, I mean, he's got other sets of other types of proposals within his, for like, how, like, you know, we have a standard governance process, at least how I understand it. In the, MIP2 for just any, you know, any type of proposal, but then he's got, you know, separate types of proposals that, um, like for treasury and stuff that might have different fields attached to it and what you need to include. Yeah. So as an example, if you go on to the budget process doc on page seven, there's that matrix that basically says, what's the process by activity and the initial allocation and approval. As you can see, every single one of those is through a regular governance process, a MIP, outside of child tokens, which really shouldn't move, um, and then discretionary investments, which are just like one of the sole things that um, just kind of create this ability to kind of be more nimble. So outside of that, everything does go through the governance process. This is just saying, once things have been initially allocated and approved through governance, what's the process next for actually dispersing those, those funds? Um, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I don't think it, yeah, I, I, I understand. I, I'm just saying that like, it probably should um, include or clarify or revise what's a governance proposal or what's a treasury proposal. And then uh, when people go to a proposal skeleton or a template, then all the proposals, I, I, I suspect that you'd want to put all the proposals in one place. So if people want to get the different types of proposals, so that we need some page where it has like, here's all the different template proposals we have and here's what they do. Yeah, and that's in one place. Is just, we, have to, we have to kind of merge these two documents and, and talk about all the different types of proposals and everything like that. Yeah, so I, so I maybe I get a chance to look at yep. the existing MIPS and then integrate those things are so we don't have to like, Talk about something that we don't know if someone's read or not, or um, and then then they would then this would supersede the previous ones because it would or at least restate it or clarify so that someone's not required to go read all the MIPS in order to catch up to what's going on, or I don't know how you guys had a plan for that as opposed to revising the previous documents, you know, which is either way fine. Well, yeah. I think I think maybe if you view this in like context of like how the U.S. like governs to some degree, right? You have this the Constitution, which is like basic governance, right? This is like the high level rules. This is the Bible for like how we like identify what the culture is around how we are governed. And then the next step to that is like, okay, what situations do these different bodies have the the next ability to govern, like? okay, when does the state have the ability to govern something and, and choose the direction of something versus when does the, you know, the federal government, and I know that sounds hierarchical, but that's just a way to I, I view these things. It's like, okay, the, these next layers of frameworks are just like more granular ways to say, okay, when does this next thing, um, you know, take effect? So it's not, yeah, I don't, it's, I don't... it's not like, it's not changing what is outlined in the constitution. It's just saying, okay, when, when does something start getting analyzed through a different view? Or perspective. Sure. Okay. I mean, I it, I don't. 
it's okay. I it's just um, it. I think it'd be easy or for I I I suspect that like when you have like the governance page where people can go to like get a template of a proposal, that is going to be like one page, and it's going to say like here's all the different types of proposals and when you want to use them, as opposed to here's these granular proposals and here's a link to the general proposals and then have them explained separately. <laughs> So just in the context of like, um, yeah, there's some complexity here, but let's just kind of restate it to be kind of clear. Like this is this general one, here's a specific one. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I think there's definitely like an overview page that sort of creates a summary of the entire structure or something like that. Yeah, it's, it's okay whether you guys wanna like, you know, supersede it or add to it or be more granular like i don't it, it's fine it's just that i'm just thinking about it from the complexity of like someone coming along and what's the what's the you know two documents like what's the barrier to entry you know as opposed to saying read uh mips uh zero or one through 15a for example I mean, I guess one fundamental question is like, how many things do you see outside of the treasury that like governance will be voting on? Like what powers will the governance holder, the token holders actually have outside of like deciding where treasury goes, which relates to movement funding? I mean, I, in, in my mind, and again, I'm sure there's like other situations I just can't think of, but like what other situations do you see like there being a voting situation that doesn't have some kind of relation to fund outflows I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, I, I don't, I don't know right now. And but, um, but I'm, I'm not sure if I understand like um, the question in the context of um, like having um, a summary framework or. Um, well, I guess. I guess we were talking about like how when people know whether it's some things like a general purpose versus treasury purpose, and and I was just clarifying like to see, understand, um, you know, just vision wise, what other like what would what would fall more into that general purpose versus not in something like this? Because, um, you know, at least for the time being, I, I see like almost everything being treasury related and going through these processes. No, I mean I I'm not saying anything doesn't go through this process. I mean the pre previous, yeah, I, I don't. Like I think the previous with um, there's a one time payout, a recurring payout. Um, uh, I think it's like four different templates from previously, and and, and they had to do with uh, treasury uh, payout decisions. Um, so being more specific about the types of payout decisions, it's fine. But um, I don't, I don't think. I don't think it's clear or it uh, in terms of like what these um, processes are about. I just, I'm just talking about specifically the case that there's a bunch of documents now, like when, in your examples about like the constitution and stuff like that, you know, in, in businesses, there's like the articles of incorporation um, that generally describe um, in the bylaws, right? Those are two documents I talk about. And so um, uh, you just do like an amendment to those or, um, and so I, I was just kind of thinking through the MIPS 1 through 15A, um, you know, describes like, here's the things that we do, then a summary. It, it'd be nice to have in one place, like, here's all the permutate, here's all the different proposals um, they are. And, and um, but it, I mean, if we don't, I'm, I'm not really sure what's controversial. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I know we'll talk more during the governance on uh, Wednesday at two. Uh, but anything else? You know, again, I'll, I'll chug along on my end. But anything else you think we should hit on now or discuss? No, I, I'm still just a little confused about what was if I was not communicating something properly or like what was like what we just talked about.
Yeah, maybe I, maybe I am still confused. I don't know, Fuego or Obi, if you have any comments to, to help me, because I know we've we've kind of worked with these proposals a little bit more in depth. Um, I mean, I think all we're saying is that we need to define the types of proposals that we would um, be needing to use and then make it a little bit simpler in like an overview page or something like that. Um, and figure out how the process that we've already defined fits into each of those. I mean, okay, so maybe, maybe is it as simple as just like having a flow chart that's like an if then, like kind of thing? It's like, if your proposal has to do with this, go to this step. If it has to do with this, then go to this step. And then it all kind of leads to different processes and, and following different frameworks. And within that, you could have like access to or like uh, pointing to other links. So it's like, okay, this is an investment. Okay, here's the investment proposal framework that leads you to a Notion page. Is this a community grant? Okay, this leads you to this. Is this is just a general, like maybe you're trying to set up a partnership with another DAO and it doesn't have to do with treasury function. Okay, it goes through this process and here's the document to write this, this MIP. Is, is that kind of what you're talking about? I, I wasn't being specific about what the thing was. I was just, I mean, like, the only thing I was trying to communicate was that there's documents now um, that describe types of proposals, and then there's these new documents that are more specific on the type of proposals, and it'd be useful to go back to those other documents and clarify. So in, in this updated document uh, with the specific types of proposals to clarify, provide a summary um, of, or the templates of like, here's what they are now. Um, and I don't, I don't really have a preference in terms of like how or why or why, but I, I do think that in the context of um, a previous um, general structure, not specific, um, for whatever reason, backing that up, that it should be restated clearly um, so that you're not required to read 1 through 15a. That's, that's all I was saying. Okay, noted. I will definitely go through those and, uh, and make sure that it's clear and consistent. <clears throat> well, I, I appreciate it. Actually. Everything you guys are doing. Um, is, there any, is there anything else? Not from my end. I think, I'm, I think I'm getting somewhere nice to push out. Okay. Cool. Cool. Thanks for the time, guys. Yep. Thank you. Have a good day. Appreciate it. Talk to you soon. Bye.